Hello, this is Randy Mills from the New York Jersey Junior Lacrosse League. This is a video tutorial that is designed to help you get yourself and your program set up correctly in the new Zebra Web system as we get ready for this season. So for those who aren't already aware, starting in 2021, the NJJLL, as well as the NJISAA, the High School Association, have changed from Arbiter Sports to Zebra Web for the purpose of scheduling games and assigning officials. There are going to be a lot of things about ZebraWeb that we like, and there's a lot of nice features that we didn't have before, and there's going to be some things in Arbiter Sports that we miss, and we're going to have to get used to a new way of doing some of those things. So, each program completed a form giving me the information about what teams you were going to have for the 2021 season, and you were also uh, required to list a program representative, and if you wanted to, you could list a second program scheduler. Um, so for now, we're either putting one or two people in for each program. Um, we may add on to that later on, but this is really right now designed for the two primary people from each program. We'll talk about coaches and adding them later in this video. So the next thing that's going to happen, if you were one of those people listed on that form, you're going to get an email from um, ZebraWeb, and that email looks like this. If you look at the top, it says NJJLL, Garden State Lacrosse Officials Association, welcome to ZebraWeb. Well, let me just talk for a second about the Garden State Lacrosse Officials Association or the GSLOA. Um, in the past, the NJJLL went through me to find, train, and vet the officials that were used on our youth games. And moving forward based on a best practices listed in U.S. Lacrosse, we went out and I formed a Lacrosse Officials Association called the Garden State Lacrosse Officials Association. The primary purpose of the GSLOA is to recruit, to train, to vet um, all the lacrosse officials that will be used for our games. We make sure that they're all U.S. Lacrosse members and that we have the right people on the field. The GSLOA will also be the ones training the coaches during the season. Now, the GSLOA is a association put together by me. So in reality, not much is going to change other than, rather than the NJJLL using me directly, they are now using me through the Garden State Lacrosse Officials Association. Just in case you hear that verbiage, you know what it's talking about. It really doesn't mean anything about the day-to-day -day operations of the league. So let's go back to the email. The email you're going to get has a lot of information in it, but the primary things are here's the website, so that's, that's where you're going to click to get to ZebraWeb. But before you even do that, we want to go back to the email, and we want to, you want to see that your username is your email address, and then you want to take this temporary password if you have not logged in before. Obviously, probably a good idea to copy that, so that you can take it to the next screen and you can go ahead and log in. So you're going to get this here. You're going to put in your email address. You're going to put in, you're going to paste that um, temporary password and you're going to click log in. Now, um, I've logged in before. Those that hadn't, what you're going to get is another screen where you're going to again put in the temporary password and then you're going to select your own password, your own unique password moving forward. So after you do that, this is going to be the screen you come to. This is the main screen for ZebraWeb. And even though we have all this stuff going on up top here, the only thing we need to worry about is right here, ZebraWeb Sports Officials, uh, Officials Assigning System. We don't need to worry about anything else up top there. So we're going to click on that and you're going to come to the welcome screen. We're going to go through what all these drop downs at the top do. And um, at a later date, we'll talk about documents and whatnot. That's not important right now. But one thing that is important for you to understand is something called Zebra Memos. Zebra Memos is a great feature within Zebra Web that we did not have before in Arbiter Sports. Arbiter Sports allowed me to send out emails to you, um, but emails sometimes get lost, misdirected. Um, you lose them after you read them and whatnot. So what Zebra Web Memos are, it allows me to create uh, a message in the system that gets automatically emailed to those people listed in the Zebra Web system. 
And um, it also, if you sign up, which will show you where to, to sign up for receiving uh, text messages about the fact that there's a new Zebra memo. But the nicest feature about it is um, if you got a Zebra memo from me a couple weeks ago and you don't remember exactly what it was and you don't want to look for, you can't find the old email, every Zebra memo we say uh, we send gets saved in the system. And while there's nothing here because I haven't sent any to you guys yet, um, you can always go back for the entire season and you can see any Zebra memo memos that were sent out. And like I said, we'll talk about how to get it so that you can get the text messages also to let you know that there was a new Zebra memo. So, welcome is the screen we're on now. Next, most important thing is Teams Locations, My Profile. You're going to click on that, and your name and uh, first name and last name should be filled out already. And you may or may not have day and evening phone numbers listed already. Um, if not, you're going to have to put something in there. But what's even more important for us, even though it's not a required field, is cell phone. In the NJJLL, we really primarily deal with cell phones. Um, I asked, they asked the people from Zebra Web if they could not make the day and evening a default and just make the cell phone a default, and we're waiting to hear on that. But you are required to put in an address at this point. And it is important that the uh, program representative that's listed in Zebra Web do this because that's the address I'm going to use when I go to send out the rules scorecards after you attend a rules meeting. And that's, a, for those that have seen them before, this is the scorecard that the officials use to keep scoring the game. It's also a template that can be used to measure whether a stick is legal. That's why it's a funny shape. But the most important thing about it is it's got the, um, the rules listed on it. It's a cheat sheet of all the NJJLL rules that it's a handy little thing for your coaches to have. And if you don't put an address in there, I don't have an address to send it to. And again, those will get sent out once I have verification that a coach attends a rules meeting. So, I'll move myself over here. Let's continue to go down the screen. After you completed your address, you're probably going to want to make sure that this box is checked if you want to get notified when a game changes. I don't know why a program representative or a scheduler wouldn't want to be notified, but I would make sure that you have that checked. The next is where you add the cell phone notifications for Zebra memos. From the drop-down list, you have to pick who your uh, cell provider is. Then you have to text, uh, check the box. I'm not going to do that right now, so I don't start getting text messages um, yet. But uh, you would, you would want to check that box if you want to get a test SMS. Just by putting this in here, um, that's going to simply uh, set that this cell number that you put up here will start to receive text notifications whenever there's a zebra memo or also text notifications about games and game status. So you can turn that off at any time if you want to, but this is where you, you turn it on. Below this, you have uh, team affiliations or school affiliations. And this is really just designed for the officials. If an official, let's say they have a child who still goes to Vernon High School, well, they might want to put down here that they have a conflict where it's really that's what means affiliated means the school they have a conflict with and um, go from there. But for program directors, program schedulers, you don't need to deal with team affiliations. So after you complete your information, you're going to hit save. And the next thing we're going to go to on our drop down down here are notifications. Quickly, just read through these. If for some reason you don't want one of these notifications, you can uncheck the box hit update notifications, and then you won't get that. But I think for the most part, our program representatives and our program schedulers are going to want to get all these notifications. Below that on the list is view. This is one of a couple ways that you can get the contact information from the other towns. So if you hit this drop down, it's going to show every team and every town that's available out there. So if you wanted to know does Booten have a fifth grade team? You can come here and you can see that no, Booten does not have a fifth grade team. If you were looking to maybe play Booten sixth grade team, well, you can click on Booten sixth grade and there's no information filled out here and that's not for you to fill out. We're not worrying about team documents, all right? Um, but at the bottom here is where you'll get the information on the contact information for Booten for, so you can reach out and get in touch with the boot and scheduler in this case as you can see it says here uh, representative as scheduler so this is one person that's doing both jobs for boot and township 
So that's one of a couple ways you can get the contact information from the different programs. Um, again, you, you pick uh, a, a different team in here. You're going to see out-of-state teams, Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. All right, We're not getting worried about that right now. There's not going to be any contact information in there for Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. They're just mentioned in the drop-down uh, because some teams play these out-of-state teams at their home venue, and that way they can be properly listed in the system. So below that is town, and this is the next most important thing for you guys to go in and update um, all, all of your settings. So we're going to start with edit. All right. When you click in here, the only thing that should probably be filled out ahead of time up top is going to be the venue. Now, I set myself up as a representative of Vernon Lacrosse. That's the program I used to be associated with uh, a long time ago. And if you want to, you can enter in this information. You're not required to put anything up here other than the town name, which is set by default. And if you want to add information, you can. If you want to add a website that your program uses and you think might be helpful to others, go ahead. If maybe on that website or elsewhere you've got directions, um, you could add the link to them there. This should be a correct listing of the teams you're going to have in 2021. If something changes, by all means, you can still contact me. That is not what this click here to edit teams is for. Um, if you need to change any teams, add a team, um, whatnot, just send me an email like you've done in the past, randy at njlacrosse.com, and say, hey, Randy, um, I'm from Vernon Township. Would you please add a fourth grade 7v7 team for me? Or, hey, Randy, this is um, Pete from Vernon Lacrosse. Could you please remove our sixth grade team? We're not going to have a sixth grade team this year. Um, what this click here to edit teams does is it just brings you to a drop down list, which of course Vernon's all the way at the bottom, but it just shows out of all the teams the ones that are associated with Vernon Township. You don't want to certainly click on any other boxes. You don't want to uncheck any of these boxes. That's just going to mess the system up. So um, you do not need to worry about click here to edit teams. Now, um, for town notes, if there's anything you thought would be important, you know, if you wanted to put down in here that um, our fifth grade team is made up of fourth and fifth graders. You could do that. You don't really need to. It's pretty much assumed that if you um, only have a fifth grade team and you don't have a fourth grade team, I think most programs understand that there's probably going to be fourth graders playing on that fifth grade team. So down below here, you can add more contacts to the system if you want to. There's no requirement for you to add anybody in here if you don't want to. But if you do want to, you can go ahead, you can add them in, and um, they're not going to be uh, listed as in the drop-downs as far as the actual program director or representative or the scheduler. But if you want to add this information in, you can. Um, going down further, these are your venues um, or your fields. Um, in the NJJLL, we always start the venue name with the name of the town. And then you just want to go through, make sure that the um, instructions are right, um, that they, th these are set up right with the correct addresses and whatnot. If you want to put directions in here, you can this day with GPS. I don't know that you really need to. Um, there is a drop down here that's by default set to no, um, but if your field has lights and you want to say it has lights, go ahead and change it to lights. Not required, but if you want to fix that, go ahead. Make sure that all your fields are listed correctly. Um, do not add any fields at this time. And if you need to remove a field, please just go through me so that we can make sure it gets done correctly and everything uh, matches the other data that's in the system. So again, send me an email if you need to add a field or you need to um, delete a field. But if you wanted to change Maple Grange Road to 25 Maple Grange Road, that's something you can do yourself in the system as well add as add any directions. And then down here where it says venue notes, look, if you've got, if you're playing in a municipal park and they don't allow dogs or a school property, they don't allow dogs or whatever special instructions you want to put in there, you can certainly add them to the venue and they will be included in the information that the other programs get. So as we go down further, here is a place that, again, this is totally optional, but if you wanted to enter your third grade coach's information, you could do that. Um, you could also add what well, they're calling it a parent. It could be an assistant coach, but you can add up to two contact people for each individual team. 
Um, again, this is not required that any NJJLL teams do that. If you want to do it, that's fine. Do not worry about the rosters. We're not using rosters in the NJJLL. There's nothing there to edit. Um, and do not click on any of these venues. You need to make sure that all venues are highlighted for each team. Um, if you accidentally click over here and some of the venues get unhighlighted, well, then you won't be able to schedule any games for the Vernon third grade team on the venues that aren't highlighted. So make sure that you don't click over there. Once you're done, um, you can click Save, and we can go down to the next field here. So we were under Town. View is basically just going to show you your township um, information, but it's also another place that if you want to go in and see, okay, this is Caldwell. This is the teams they have this year. Oh, and while we're here, um, most of you are familiar with the system we use for grading um, the the teams for the purposes of the playoffs. Um, we have AAA, AA, A, and this tells you that Caldwell um, eighth grade is AAA level this year, and it shows you the teams that they have. Uh, you want to know, does Caldwell play fourth grade? Do they play 7v7 or 10v10? Well, you see here that they play 10v10. Then you can go down through here, and you can see the list of their venues. Um, and if they listed a coach, um, you know, that would be listed there. Um, but this is not the place where you're going to get the contact information. So again, town restrictions. This is not something we need to get involved in. This is simply if you wanted to go in and block availability for fields, you could pick the date, you could pick the time, start time and end time that is blocked. Um, we don't really get involved in that in the NJJLL, so you don't need to use that. And then last is the history. This is just a neat little thing. Um, if you pick your town, which is the only one that's going to be available, it's going to show you any changes made to your town's uh, setup in the system, who made the change. Changes might have been made by me. It can only be made by me, you, the program representative, or the program um, scheduler. You all have administrative rights for your particular town. But if something got changed and you want to know who changed it, this will tell you. So after we've gone through this, if you want to click on My Town Users, that's just going to give you a drop-down that's going to show you who the users are for your township that's listed right now. Again, in the future, we may open it up so you can add more people. But for right now, to get started, um, two people per program was the maximum. Now, we're not going to get involved in games right now. All right? Games are going to be a totally different video. We don't want to overwhelm anybody at this time. So then under reports, the only thing that you need to worry about now, you don't need to worry about anything else other than contacts. Again, this is another way that um, system administrators, that's just me, the assigners, that's just uh, myself, Mark Batar, Al Regner, and Charles Talley are still our assigners um, for this year. And then um, the, uh, go back to contacts, officials. The big thing is team users or town users. This, again, is where you can get, if you want to know, for Chatham. Okay, they have Randy uh, and they have Kevin. And um, that's who you would contact if you needed to get in touch with um, Chatham Township. So, going back, under reports, contacts, um, we're not involved with uh, observers. Town contacts are going to be the same as town users, are going to be the same as team users, so you don't need to get too involved in any of that. So once you get that all done, uh, make sure that the other representative from your town gets it done also. Um, we can get ready to do the next step, which is allow you to enter games, which will make another tutorial. Um, in the future, look for uh, Zebra memos um, and updated information for me about the rules meetings for 2021. It is uh, really important that the coaches um, do att attend a uh, online rules meeting. Um, one of the leading causes of lawsuits against uh, programs, coaches, and officials is lack of training. And if you've got a coach, and God forbid there's a lawsuit, um, the Rutgers class, which I've also been an instructor for that, um, is not going to protect you um, if the, t the coach has not been properly trained in the rules. Um, so, it's really important that a co every coach attends an online youth rules meeting. That way, if, God forbid, something happens, I'll be able to verify the date and time that that coach was properly trained in the U.S. Lacrosse and the NJJLL youth rules. So, if anybody has any questions or problems, feel free to shoot me an email. 
Randy at NJLacrosse.com. Um, let's get ready for a great season. Everybody have a great day.